Hey guys, thanks for watching. Welcome to Full Time Composing. Today we're going to be talking about five of the hardest truths that I've had to learn, um, whether it be over the past, you know, month or so of doing this or the past, you know, five years. And not only are we going to talk about the five uh, hardest truths, um, we're going to talk about why they can be turned into positives as well. Alrighty, number one, um, aesthetic matters. The way that you present yourself on social media, on YouTube, um, all that stuff, it matters. The look matters. And that's unfortunate because we're composers and all we want to do is write music, right? But we should also know that the visual is just as important as the audio. If the content that you put out looks amateurish, then you're going to appear amateurish. This goes for um, just the random people that you have on social media and for directors and producers as well. It's really important to find an aesthetic, um, like a look, um, you know, your vibe might be um, like the cool minimalist vibe. Your vibe might be like the, the rustic kind of vibe, the hipster vibe or colorful retro like. Either way, you have to pick one and then kind of stick with it for all of your social media platforms. I, for instance, haven't quite found it yet. I'm still trying to develop my vibe and my aesthetic uh, per se. Um, so it, it takes some time. And I've realized whenever I've uploaded music onto uh, YouTube um, with cool visuals behind it, they've always gotten more reactions than anything else that I've uploaded just because um, you have something nice to look at. If your content pops, then it will always draw more attention than the other guy. And I know that sucks and I know that's shallow, but that's just kind of the way that it is. So we might as well just own it. The positive about this is that it's easier than ever to develop an aesthetic um, or to make your stuff look aesthetic. I mean, you know, the video cameras that you get from iPhones and Androids these days are, you know, a hundred times better than anything you could buy, you know, five years ago. There's cheap and free uh, video editing software. I personally use uh, Filmora. Um, it's, it's on the cheaper side. I think it's under $200 maybe, but I do know of free ones like DaVinci Resolve. That's a really popular one. And the software even comes with like really basic uh, loots. Um, so you can color grade your videos and make your uh, videos look aesthetic. As you can judge by my videos, it's like baby's first color grading, so it's not spectacular or anything, but you know, it's, it's getting there and every time I get a little bit better. It's extremely easy to create websites nowadays with uh, services like um, Squarespace and Wix and stuff like that. Now these are paid services, but in my opinion, you get what you pay for because if it's easy and it gives you a professional look, then it's worth the investment. I know that we're here to talk about composing and not branding and stuff like that, but um, one of the other unfortunate truths that I've learned is that they go hand in hand. So in my opinion, your um, priority for content, it should sound good, obviously, because we are composers. Um, and then priority two, it should look good. The number two hardest truth that I've learned, and this wasn't over the past uh, month, this was over the past lifetime, is that your family and your friends probably don't like your music. I know, I know it sucks. And you know, it's maybe, maybe it's not the same for everybody. Um, maybe your family and your friends do genuinely like your music and they're not just, you know, supporting you, you know, just to support you. But let's face reality, right? Not everybody's into cinematic music. Not everybody's into epic orchestral hybrid music not everybody's into classical music not everybody's into you know underscore for scene you know zero we are a special breed we're the ones that you know load up film scores on our spotify and listen to them in our car and where you listen to them all day and we genuinely enjoy them we enjoy them because we are film composers and we appreciate that kind of genre and to expect you know the normal person to enjoy listening to that kind of music is kind of unrealistic. The positive is they're not the ones that get you the job. The director and the producer are the ones that get you the job. If they like your music, that's all that matters. You shouldn't be writing music to please the people on your Facebook or Instagram or your YouTube. You should be writing music to hopefully get the next gig or you're writing the music for yourself because you love what you're writing. So don't get discouraged when you write a new piece and you put it on your social media and you get, you know, very little reacts to it. 
if you have a friend that's like really into basketball and he's all about basketball, but that's not your thing, you're probably not going to pay that much attention to it. You'll support him, but you're probably not going to engage with him on the level that he wants to be engaged with. Number three, you're probably not going to end up writing the music that you want to write. It doesn't matter how good you are at writing epic hybrid trailer music. It doesn't matter how good you are at writing John Williams-esque, uh, you know, sweeping orchestral music. No one cares if you write like Hans Zimmer or John Williams or John Powell or any of those guys. Jobs that demand, you know, epic hybrid orchestral balls of the wall, like action music, um, they're only gonna take up about maybe 5% of the jobs that you would take. More than likely when you're starting out, you're gonna be working with indie film directors and um, startup companies and stuff like that. You're not gonna be working with, you know, Christopher Nolan. There isn't going to be a demand for you to write this epic hybrid orchestral music. Don't get me wrong, it's fun. And I, I have written that style of music too. But practically that's probably not where you should spend your time. I'd say 95% of the jobs that you're going to be taking in your first couple of years of um, going full time are going to be uh, documentaries, commercials, um, really low budget uh, TV shows, maybe a Hallmark movie. The demand is for more low key minimalistic music that fits uh, dramas and indie movies. Now the positives about this are, if you have the chops to write big epic orchestral music, um, you know, via John Williams, Hans Zimmer, stuff like that, um, you probably have the chops to write a simple underscore, at least I would hope. More often than not, the music that works um, best for a scene is the simplest option. Um, so if you can write simple music and that's not that's not always the easiest right but if you can write simple music then you are more valuable than the next guy all right my number four hardest truth that i've had to learn is that success does not equal fame now there's nothing wrong about dreaming big and there's nothing wrong about fantasizing about scoring the next you know uh star wars movie or uh scoring the next chris nolan movie or the next big blockbuster the next marvel whatever but i don't think that should be your measure of success and everyone's measure of success is different but when you look at um you know maybe the 10 blockbuster movies that are going to come out next year um, you could probably pinpoint four people who scored them. Not only are those people successful, but they are celebrities. The chances of achieving that status are probably the same chances as winning the lotto. Let's be real. Again, I'm not telling you to not dream big, but I don't want you to be discouraged because that is your measure of success, whether or not you score Avengers 50. The positive in this is that there's actually a lot of scoring work to go around. There's Netflix documentaries, there's commercials, there is um, TV movies, there's the $5 bin at Walmart, you know? A lot of people need music and a lot of people make a good living um, writing music for media without, you know, all the fanfare. So the next time that you're watching a documentary or you're watching National Geographic or you saw a commercial that has cool music or a reality TV show or, you know, a cartoon, you probably don't know the name of the person who composed the music for all those. But, you know, he's probably making a decent wage. And I bet he feels successful and I bet he's happy. That's personally my measure of success. My measure of success is not going out to Hollywood and scoring the next blockbuster. My measure of success is being able to wake up and do this, you know, nine to five. If I have a constant stream of work, whether it be, you know, um, indie budget TV shows or um, um, Hallmark movies or stuff like that, I mean, then I've made it. That's all I need. Again, everyone's measure of success is different. So if you have those ambitions, there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, I would love to score the next Star Wars, but I'm also not gonna feel unsuccessful and down on myself if I don't. All right, number five, um, you probably won't make a profit or you shouldn't make a profit for a while. And what I mean by that is, as you start collecting paychecks, you need to start putting money um, back into your business. That's not to say to starve or starve your family so you can get the latest sample library or anything like that. However, maybe that means not getting the PS5 right now. 
as if you could find one right now anyway. Every dollar you make, you should treat as either a living expense or a business expense. As soon as I got my paycheck from the last episode that I turned in, I immediately, for one, paid my bills. Um, but two, I bought a sample library that's gonna make my life way easier in the long run. I'm not saying that you need to go out and buy every shiny new um, piece of gear or sample library that comes out. However, if it is something that um, you could use on a future project or is going to enhance your workflow, um, then go for it. If it makes your next project sound better or move faster, then it's a business investment. I probably don't need two monitors and a TV screen, but once I added that TV screen, my workflow improved drastically. I probably don't need a fader control, but once I got one and I was able to tie like the music submix, the dialogue stem, the uh, temp score stem and all that stuff to faders, it made my life easier. I probably didn't need a tablet, which I run Metagrade on, um, but again, it's sped up my workflow immensely. Point being, it probably looks like I have a bunch of fancy gadgets and sample libraries that I don't need. But anytime I make a purchase, I ask myself, am I going to use this? Is this going to make my life better? Is this going to make the next project better? And that's how you grow and you evolve as a composer, you evolve as a business, and you keep getting better, and the projects keep getting better, and you eventually move on to the next tier. Again, I'm not saying to go out and, you know, blow your money, but if you're making money and you have excess money and you have your bills paid and your family's not starving or homeless, then you can reinvest into your business. I think I already said the positives there. I think I went on a tangent. The point is, it's probably good to accept that you're not gonna make a profit in the first, you know, once to year, maybe. Break even, yes, but profit later. And, you know, I haven't experienced this yet. I've only been at this full time for, you know, a month and a half or something like that now. But I do know that every time that I've gotten paid and I've decided to make a smart um, purchase, it's always been a good idea. Like just last week, I got golf floss and now I don't have to EQ anymore. All right, guys, I hope this video has been helpful. Um, as always, please like and subscribe. The side hustle is an important thing and there's no better side hustle than YouTube. So smash the <laughs> subscribe button. Also, if you guys have any questions for me, leave them in the comments. I will be happy to answer them for the next video. All right, guys, see you next time.